Yes, I think that's pretty clear that there are going to be some limits to scientific explanation. Um, science itself drives with its uh, search for explanation uh, toward uh, deeper and deeper levels of explanation and toward broader uh, scope of explanation. Um, but the bounds of, it seems to me, scientific explanation are going to be set by um, uh, the f getting to the fundamental structures of the natural world, of how uh, nature works at its deepest levels uh, in its fundamental forms. Um, but finally there are going to be questions that science will lead you to but which it cannot itself answer. Questions about um, why those fundamental structures exist rather than alternative structures. If it turns out that the basic uh, arrangement of things is contingent rather than somehow necessary and self-explanatory, then wider questions are going to arise. It's precisely that kind of reasoning that has driven classical, one of the classical theological arguments for the existence of God, the cosmological argument that has its roots in Thomas Aquinas in the 13th century uh, and before. Um, and whether or not one thinks that that argument can be made to succeed uh, on purely philosophical grounds, it represents a form of human inquiry that takes a step beyond the possible bounds of scientific inquiry. It sets an even wider context, an ultimate context, uh, in which we can wonder about the origin and meaning of the universe in which we find ourselves. So there will be, it does, does seem to me that there are limits to scientific inquiry, that there are questions that the sciences can't expect in principle to be able to answer. Um, and that opens the door inevitably as long as there are human beings who are curious and who persist in asking the question why there will be um, some of us who want to try to, to, to think through those questions as best we can. I guess I want to give two answers to that question. One is not all theologians, all religious thinkers, need to to be um, versed in the natural sciences. Uh, I think there's important work to be done in theology simply internal to the theological traditions, trying to articulate them to lay out their, their internal logic, uh, the way in which the concepts work, to make them clear, uh, make them available to other human beings. Uh, so there's lots of theological work to be done that doesn't require uh, and, and being conversant with the natural sciences. But they're also, but it's also a legitimate project, an important project, um, to try to make the connections to the natural sciences. Simplest reason is that um, theology is in part concerned with the world that God has, that we theologians affirm that God has made. And that means that makes sense to pay attention to what the natural scientists think they know about that world. Um, many human beings are both uh, persons of faith and students of the sciences. And so one of the things that we seek to do is to produce coherence in our thinking, to get our web of beliefs, in Quine's phrase, as coherent as we can. Uh, we can't always make all parts of that network of belief coherent, uh, but there's a natural drive to think about how the various pieces fit together. So that if you're both driven by scientific curiosity and moved by uh, classical religious concerns, then it's nothing could be more natural than to ask how these, these different dimensions of our thinking about the world and our place in the world um, can be rendered coherent, how they fit together. Uh, and so for that reason, at least some of us need to take some time to pay attention to what the natural sciences are saying. The ideal way to do that is to, I mean, there are people with dual training, people who have done um, graduate level study in the natural sciences and then also go on and do work in, in uh, theology. Um, that isn't true of me, 
I, I come to the to the sciences with a curiosity, not as a scientist, but as a philosopher of religion or philosophical theologian uh, interested in, in these issues. But recognizing the con connections there and uh, uh, fascinated by what I've been able to learn from natural scientists. I don't have a good answer to that question. That's an extraordinarily difficult question, the, the meaning of causality in contemporary physics. Um, philosophical discussions of causality uh, have been in, they're very difficult. Uh, they become pretty highly technical um, uh, and are in some state of disarray given how difficult causal concepts are. Um, um, pretty clearly, causal concepts figure prominently in, in natural scientific explanation. But the analysis of those concepts, trying to get clear on what is meant by a cause uh, and by causal law, um, presents a whole set of, of difficulties. My interest in these issues is primarily uh, takes shape against the background of classical theological concerns to talk about God's relationship to the causal structures of nature. And one way of doing that is a scheme of primary and secondary causation that um, was developed uh, out of Thomistic uh, theology. So God was understood to be the primary cause, cause term there being used analogically, um, that is to say that God is the cause of being, but that is a unique kind of causing, uh, unlike any form of causation that we see at the created level among creatures. Creatures cause changes in other creatures, cause changes in the properties of things, whereas the idea is that God causes the very being of things. Uh, that's a powerful scheme to think of God acting in, let's say, two ways. Uh, as the source of existence, uh, sustaining the world at every moment, and acting by means of created causes to produce all the kinds of changes we see around us in the world. That, that scheme was formulated and drew upon um, a metaphysics of substances and their causal powers that has its roots back in Aristotle as modified by Thomas. Uh, and that scheme faces fundamental challenge in the face of contemporary science. So um, quantum mechanics doesn't provide us with um, well-defined substances with determinate properties um, uh, that have continuous trajectories in time and space. Uh, instead, we get these really odd entities that, um, have, that have to be understood in terms of superposition of incompatible properties that are, can be only be described probabilistically. Um, that presents interesting conceptual problems for trying to think about, trying to, re, trying to conceive of God's relation to created causes. If, if at the deepest levels of nature we don't have causes in quite the sense that the tradition has thought. So part of what I'm doing here is trying to think through some of those issues uh, to present the, the problem, the challenges um, that emerge from quantum physics for that classic theological structure for thinking about God's relation to created things.